Okay, so this is gonna be a weird video. The reason we're making this is because earlier yesterday, we had Sam Constantino share the latest Sportsnet draft rankings for the top 32 prospects in the 2022 draft. Now, we're gonna be doing a few things here. Yes, I want to look at the list. I want to see who is ordered where, and I think it'd be fun to go out there and just talk about that here. But as well, we want to talk about the writer because Sam Constantino kind of has this reputation as to being just one of the worst prospect analysts out there in terms of what he actually says. Not gonna doubt the guy's intellect or his knowledge of the game or his connections or what it is that he's done to get to this point. Sam Constantino has worked hard to become a Sportsnet guy who writes these articles about prospects in their website, but when it comes to the actual content of the piece itself, there's been somewhat of a meme floating around the past few years that says that Sam Constantino doesn't really watch these prospects, he just ranks them and writes whatever he wants about them because that's what he does. Either way, we're going to go over onto the article, take a look at Sportsnet's 2023 Draft Prospect Rankings, April edition. What I wanted to do was take a look at the first 15 and go over a few other names as well. And in order to do this, we're going to go over onto Fails on McDonald's Twitter account. He is a host on the Roxy Fever podcast here in Vancouver, pretty local Vancouver guy, who usually has a good amount of fun with these Sam Constantino lists. The reason I say that is because Fails on McDonald normally takes screenshots of these Sam Constantino scouting reports, posts them on Twitter, and writes about how they're inadequate as scouting reports. Don't believe me? Here we go. Welcome to a deluxe edition of That's Not a Scouting Report with Sam Constantino. Sorry this took so long, but this one was special. Six entries have too many spaces. At least one name is spelt wrong. Most of the sentences written by Constantino don't make any sense. Anyways, here's a roster update. The first overall pick on Sam Constantino's list is Connor Bedard, whose scouting report reads this, with nothing left to prove at the junior level, a men's world roster spot remains possible. Now, this is kind of what I mean. Is that really a scouting report? If I knew nothing about Connor Bedard, which admittedly it's kind of hard to do that these days, and I read this as my first exposure to the guy, imagine I'm just a random hockey fan who hasn't picked up a magazine or hasn't seen any prospect stuff this entire year, and I go onto sportsnet.ca and I look at this article as my first piece of information on these prospects. I see Connor Bedard with nothing left to prove at the junior level, a men's world roster spot remains available. What does that mean? What does that tell you about the prospect? It doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't tell you about how he plays, how his potential is, how good he is, what he's good at, anything like that. It just says, oh, he's got a chance at being at the Men's World Championships. Let's continue over onto the next one here. The second overall pick on Sam Constantino's list is Adam Fantilli. He joined Jack Eichel and Paul Correa as just the third freshman to capture the Hobie Baker as college hockey's top player. Now, that doesn't tell you much about how he plays either, but at least there's some substance there with how the information is presented. Hey, he is the best NCAA player since Eichel and Correa. He is good. And there's enough of a connotation with what is written out here to actually be justified as a scouting report, although it doesn't really tell you how he plays. Either way, though, this one's a little bit better than the others. Now, here's where things get interesting. The third overall ranked prospect on Konstantinos' list is Matvey Mishkov, and if you go to the website right now, the scouting report says this, undeniably one of the most skilled players in this class. Okay, there you go. That tells you a little bit about him. It doesn't talk about his goal scoring or whatever. It talks about how he's skilled. Fine. But this actually wasn't the original text in this article. You see, at the very beginning when this was posted, this is what the original text said instead. What impact will the unfortunate and tragic passing of his father have on the player moving forward? And there's a reason Constantino changed this. Firstly, big tragedy in Russia. Matvey Mishkov's father was found in a pond, passed away. It was very unfortunate to see. This was just a few weeks ago, but... How in the world does this get greenlit? Like, the social media reaction was so strong as to this being Matvey Mishkov's scouting report that there's no wonder why it was changed to talking about how he's a skilled player. Are you kidding me? What kind of scouting report is this? What impact will the unfortunate and tragic passing of his father have on the player? This is what fails on McDonald's said. This one has rightfully gotten a lot of attention, but I like how we just changed it to something nondescript and hoped no one would notice. Either way, his dad died is definitely a new level of that's not a scouting report. 
Let's move on to number four on the Constantino list. Leo Carlson. He has backed up a successful regular season by doing historic things for a player his age in the SHL playoffs. Now, the criticism here by Fails on McDonald's says, SHL forward Leo Carlson, what does he do? Does he do things? Let's find out. Well, the scouting report doesn't tell you what he does. It just says that he's done historic things in the SHL playoffs. Now, fifth overall is where things get funny because it's Will Smith out of the US NTDP. Constantino writes he has a bubbly personality to go along with his world-class skill, makes plays, and has excellent finishing touch. And the tweet here by Fails on McDonald says, I genuinely think Sam is under the impression he was supposed to scout famous Hollywood actor Will Smith and wrote this after watching the movie Hitch 2005. Yeah, okay, I mean... It's funny the way he says that, but at the same time, at the very least, the Will Smith scouting report talks about how he has world-class skill and he's able to make plays and has a finishing touch. A lot of the other scouting reports don't tell you anything about what the players actually are capable of doing, so I'll give Constantino a pass for this one. Sixth overall, Zach Benson. On a team full of rock stars, first round picks, and other NHL interests, he's the best of the lot on many nights. Now, that doesn't really talk about his two-way play, how skilled he is and how many points he was able to get, but it just says that he's on a really good team and he's the best, so... I guess that's all right. Then you have yourselves number seven on Constantino's list, Colby Barlow of the Owen Sound Attack. He oozes character and a skill set that screams shoot first, but not only limited to the shot option. And I'm going to admit, this is where things start to round out a little bit. Okay, you're talking about a guy who likes to shoot, but he can't just shoot. That's at the very least better than some of the others here. It gets a little bit better, too. The next one, Ryan Leonard from the NTTP, a rugged player with a motor that doesn't quit. He competes as hard as he shoots it and is one of the elite shooters available this year. Now, that's a weird way to phrase it, competes as hard as he shoots it, but I get what he's saying. Motor, doesn't quit, great shot, one of the best shooters, top 10 prospect. I'll let that one slide. Then you have yourselves David Reinbacher, ninth overall. There's a short gap to the next best defenseman, so there'll be a number of suitors inside of 10 that should be willing to make a jump. Now, that doesn't really tell you much about Reinbacher, but it does kind of illustrate the lack of defensive depth at the top of this draft, so I get what he's trying to say here. Okay, we'll give it a pass. The next one is interesting, though. Samuel Hanzak out of the Giants. He projects as an impact player who uses his size effectively to give him more space than needed to utilize his skill. And that's kind of strange to read about. I mean, Fails on McDonald says this, more space than needed. It almost sounds like it's a bad thing. I don't know about this guy. He's a bit roomy. 11th overall is Nate Danielson out of the Brandon Wheat Kings. And this is where his sentence structure gets so good. The basement has a ceiling. Very Taoist. Okay, that's the Fails on McDonald tweet, but this is what Constantino writes about Danielson. Is a safe pick knowing the basement is a third line matchup centerman who has a top six ceiling. Yeah, you needed some periods there. You can say it's a safe pick knowing that the baseman is a third line matchup centerman. Then you can pause it and say he has a top six ceiling. Okay, that doesn't really make sense. The basement has a ceiling, bro. Come on. I will say, though, the next few scouting reports are actually pretty all right. Like, they're more than passable, in my opinion. At 12th overall, you have Edward Chalet. Inconsistency and play and effort have given many scouts a pause on this player. Having said that, he reads the play well, finds quiet ice, and knows where to go to create offense. Okay, that tells you what the player is good at, and what concerns are there as well. I think that's a good scouting report. Axel Sandin Pelica, number 13, is next up. A wonderful skater who possesses high-end puck skills. He can break pucks out in a variety of ways, and is a threat in the offensive zone. There you go, another one of these scouting reports that actually tells you about how the player plays. Next up, Oliver Moore, NTDP. The University of Minnesota commit has elite speed based on a strong, powerful stride, beats opponents wide, and then uses quick hands to elevate the puck in tight. There you go, that's three in a row where Constantino writes actual traits about the players and analyzes what they're capable of. And then, this is where things get a little bit interesting too, 15th overall, Braden Yeager. The scouting world appreciates the ability to balance his game, but a small dip in goal production does have some concern. And then the funny fails on McDonald tweet says this, Scouts do be saying this. They love when a player can balance his game. I hear it from them all the time. And the reason I decided to stop at 15 is because the next one for Dalibor Dvorsky is so poorly written. Look at this. The first letter isn't even capitalized. Unlike others, he didn't see regular time of the SHL. All Svenskin production was good. Not great. But with his peers, he is an impact player. Scouts must decipher which level of play is most indicative of future success. The commas in this one are absolutely out of control. You have to admire the confidence of him obviously getting interrupted three times and just being like, I didn't need to find my place. I got this. 
Okay, we're out of time. We're at the 10 minute mark. I'm going to leave. Let's talk about prospects a little bit more as why I want continues on this weekend. We're going to be talking about some more guys in the draft. But for now, Sam Constantino's top 32 is available in the description via the link. You can go ahead and click it and read it if you want. But I mean, the quality of some of these scouting reports is not the best. Shout out to Fails on McDonald as well for going out there and satirically poking fun at this. I get that this may come across as disrespectful and rude to be demeaning a guy's article, but at the same time, like, can you not see the problem in how these articles are written? Like, you talked about Matt Mishkov's dad dying and use that as your scouting report. Like, that doesn't... What? Either way, thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Bye.